everybody video here for you today we're going to talk some very ancient america in texas i looked into this site when i did my video on the waco tanks about two or three weeks ago this site is very near the galt site i talked about three years ago this is called the deborah l freaking site and it's right down here here is a look at this archaeological site the galt site i have it marked right there but i can get a little more specific the galt site is found right down here and then if we just go over i'll get oriented here if we go about 300 meters or a thousand feet downstream the deborah l freaking site is right in this area right here the waterway that comes through here is called buttermilk creek and that is also a name associated with these sites but the galt site and the deborah l freaking site are very close to each other but let's just go over to a couple articles here here is one link I will leave below. A discovery of Buttermilk Creek indicates Texas first inhabitants arrived earlier than one sought. Has some audio attached here if you want to listen, but it says Texas A&M archaeologists found spear points at Buttermilk Creek site dating back to about 15,000 years ago, about 2,000 years before the Clovis people. And here is a look at some of the archaeological work at the Deborah L. Freakin site at Buttermill Creek in 2016. Here's another link I will leave below. Archaeologists find 15,500 year old spear points in Texas through excavation of the Deborah L. Freakin site northwest of Austin. A team of archaeologists has identified a particular style of projectile point dated between 13,500 and 15,500 years ago or about 2,000 years older than Clovis points. Here is one 15,000 year old stem point found at the Deborah L. Freakin site. It says a team found more than 100,000 artifacts, including 328 tools and 12 complete fragmented projectile points, about 3 to 4 inches or 7.6 to 10.2 centimeters long, excavated from the Butter Mill Creek complex horizon of the Deborah L. Freakin site. It says from 19 optically stimulated luminescence dates of sediments, they determined that the artifacts were between 13,500 and 15,500 years old. And I will leave the link below if you want to read more into this. But it says the discovery is significant because almost all pre Clovis sites have stone tools, but spear points have yet to been found. These points were found under a layer with Clovis and Folsom projectile points. Clovis is dated to 13,000 to 12,700 years ago and Folsom after that. The dream has always been to find diagnostic artifacts such as projectile points that can be recognized as older than Clovis. And this is what we have at the Deborah L. Freakin site. And here is a look at some of the oldest projectile points found down here in Chile. I think this is about 14,000 years old at the Monte Verde site few other sites are talked about the page ladson site i've done a video on that the meadowcroft rock shelter in pennsylvania i've covered that paisley caves in oregon or washington i can't remember but i have covered that one also the cooper's ferry site in idaho i have covered that one also i guess my ancient america series has been pretty comprehensive but there is a few sites in here i have yet to talk about but the whole migration of the Clovis or these early Americans or were they just always here I think history has yet to come to a, a really reliable or for sure answer yet but let's take a listen to a little bit of the audio from this website here Michael Waters he is the director of the Center for the Study of the First Americans at Texas A&M University he is interviewed on this website here. Let's just take a listen to a little bit of that. Well, uh, the, the clover shows up initially on the landscape around 13,000 years ago, mm. and it disappears around 12,700 years ago. But what we found at uh, the Deborah L. Friedkin site were artifacts below the Clovis horizon, which made them significantly older than Clovis. And so uh, we've been excavating there for a, a number of years. And in the last two or three years that we've been doing our excavations, we found projectile points, which were different from those Clovis points, you know, in the layers below the Clovis horizon. So let me just be clear here. These points that you have found 
were not part of uh, the Clovis uh, 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 period? You're, you're saying that they predate the, the Clovis? Yes, uh-huh. they, they predate the Clovis time period. Uh, in fact, we published a paper back in 2011 describing the site and, and the artifacts that we found at the site. Uh, but what's new is that we now have projectile points from uh, below the Clovis horizon. And these projectile points are different than Clovis. They, they tend to be lancelet in shape, but instead of, of continuing to expand, they contract down to a stem. Mm-hmm. And these stem points are very, very distinctive and appear to be uh, dating around 15,000 to about 13,500 years ago. So does does, does this suggest that the first Texans settled around Buttermilk Creek or is that uh, too much of a leap? Well, uh, the, the first Texans, yeah, could have uh, uh, settled around the Buttermilk Creek area, but it, it's uh, I'm a geologist by training, and one thing you have to realize is that these older sediments are number one, you know, uh, rarely preserved, so they're they're going to be extremely rare and hard to find these older deposits. And then, second of all, you have to be able to find the archaeological material in these deposits. The reason that they were found at the uh, uh, at the Friedkin site was because of the fact that we have older deposits. Deposits. It was a, it was an, and also too, it was a, an attractive place to live. So in that area along Buttermilk Creek, you have permanent water. You have a lot of biological resources that you could go gather and hunt, and you also have uh, abundant tool making materials such as Edwards Chert. So, so we we know for sure that the first Texans were you know settled along Buttermilk Creek, and but I'm sure they were in other parts of the state, and it's just a, a matter of finding them. So, uh, as a researcher, what new questions uh, does the, this discovery open up for you? Yeah, it, it just uh, it's an exciting time to be in first American studies because for a very long time, you know, people thought that Clovis were the first people to come to the Americas. And now sites like Buttermilk Creek are showing us, and, and the Friedkin site there are, are showing us that people were here much earlier than we previously thought. And then we then have to now try to understand who these early people were, and especially what their relationship is to Clovis. Because we know that Clovis developed south of the continental ice sheets, so once covered all of Canada at the end of the Ice Age. And so did Clovis develop out of what we just found at the Friedkin site, or did you know, Clovis represent another migration that came into the Americas? And so there's, there's many, many questions that uh, you know, come from this research. This is really fascinating stuff. Michael Waters is the director of the Center for the Study of the First Americans at Texas A&M University. Professor Waters, uh, thanks so much for speaking with us on the Texas Standard. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Here is another website I will leave below. This comes from Science Advances Pre-Clovis Projectile Points at Deborah L. Freakin site, Texas and Implications for the Late Pleistocene Peopling of the Americas. And this is very comprehensive. It goes into a lot more detail here it has some diagrams but if people were here 15 and a half thousand years ago then what we were taught about the first americans must be very wrong but this is a good website and has a lot of a lot of interesting information on it since it's been about three years let's do a little review on the gold site here here it is when it was covered up when they were doing the research here here is a look inside of their research tent if you want to call it that but they got down to a level that few people ever researched below the Clovis here. But let's just review a little bit of that video from July of 2018. I'm Michael Collins. I'm a research professor at Texas State University in the Department of Anthropology. I'm also a research associate at the Texas Archaeological Research Laboratory at uh, University of Texas at Austin. I am president of a nonprofit organization called the Galt School of Archaeological Research that uh, is sort of the uh, operational arm of the Galt Archaeological Project. This site came to my attention when I was uh, at the University of Texas at Austin, and that was actually in the fall of 1990. And uh, an avocational archaeologist that was digging out here found some small smooth pebbles with engraving on them associated with Clovis age artifacts and this was an unprecedented find that uh, none of us had ever heard of before. At that time this property was a pay-to-dig locality 
and uh, we managed to get permission to come out here and just visit it. This was, uh, when I say we, it was Professor Tom Hester at the University of Texas at Austin and myself came out, visited the site, and decided that it was an important enough site that we'd like to do some scientific work here. And so in the summer of 1991, we arranged to do two weeks of archaeological testing here with uh, students from UT Austin, which we did. And what we found told us that there was still an awful lot of important material to be found and awful lot of good information to be gleaned from this site. But we could not work with that landowner and it was 1998 before we were back on this site when the, when the site changed hands actually. Well in Texas archaeology, uh, the Galt site is the largest, in fact this is North American archaeology, the largest Clovis site anywhere. It has the largest number of artifacts of, from the Clovis period um, and uh, one of the things that intrigues me about this place is that we have the Clovis levels. Uh, we dug a lot, down a little bit further and there's more stuff down there and we're trying to figure out what that stuff might be. It is one of the earlier archaeological sites to have been professionally excavated in the state of Texas. By, it was dug by J.E. Pierce in 1929 under the auspices of the anthropology department at the University of Texas, which is what it was at that time. And um, he demonstrated that it was one of the very largest and in terms of artifacts, one of the richest sites anywhere in Central Texas. Uh, no other professional archeologist that we know of was back on this site until 1988. And by 1988, it had become a pay to dig place. And it was, it, it looked like the proverbial World War I battlefield. It was, it was just virtually destroyed. And we assumed that it had no archaeological value left. So we were surprised in 1991 when we had the opportunity to test the site that it had a, a very extensive amount of early archaeological deposits that were still in place that had not been disturbed. Since 1998, uh, we put in uh, a number of years of intensive investigation of those early deposits here and they are contributing to a better understanding of the peopling of the Americas, the earliest peoples to be in the interior of North America. So the, the site's uh, continuing to make history. Clovis is a, uh, it's a technology uh, that's associated with people who were here uh, in North America, um, dated pretty pretty closely to uh, between 13,000 and 13,500 years ago, somewhere around there. Uh, and for, longest, for, for a very long time, they've been considered to be the oldest uh, occupation of North America. So they were, they were the first people to come over here, according to the, to the uh, research that was done in the past. And then uh, more recently, we found that there are a lot more, uh, there's more and more evidence that people were here earlier than the 13,500 year mark. Um, and it's not clear if that's just people who developed into Clovis or if it was different people or what's going on. And that's, that's one of the things that we're trying to figure out here is, is who are these people who are there where they shouldn't be. I the single most interesting thing we have found is a, uh, a small area of the site where there were we, we did a, an excavation block where we opened up an area and took it down. And we happened to come right down on an artificial stone pavement, a square patch of gravel that's about seven feet by seven feet, oriented by the cardinal directions. And it had a very thin, sparse layer of archeological material on and around that floor. That is just a quick review of my Gold Site video from July 2018. They found some sort of structure deep down oriented to the cardinal points. I found that very interesting. But here are some projectile points found at the Gold Site. And some of these dated to over 15,000 years ago.
That is the Buttermilk Creek Archaeological Site in Texas. It has in it the Galt Site and also the Deborah L. Freakin Site. History here goes back 15,000 years plus. Very interesting site. I talked about the Galt site about three years ago. Good time for review. Also included, I've never talked about the Deborah L. Freakin site. Hope you thought that was interesting and you all have a very nice day.